Hello there. So today it's a very overcast day, so hopefully you can see this here. Uh, what I'd like to do today is um, I have this uh, hexagonal stock, and I'm going to make a uh, one of my Japanese-style hammers out of this stock. Um, I had a special order this stuff. I think that this is uh, 10, it's medium carbon steel. I'm not sure if it's 1045 or 1050. I think 1045. And I think that this material is used for making bolts. So, and it, it makes a very suitable hammer. Uh, so what, I, what I'm uh, going to uh, introduce also very quickly, I've done this before, is the tools I use to punch the eye, which is the main, probably the main operation in making any hammer, or most hammers at least. So, uh, but just quickly, this stock is 120 millimeters long, and from flat to flat, it's 38 millimeters, or about an inch and a half. So about five inches long, and an inch and a half flat to flat. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, what I, you know, a lot of people ask this, these questions, so I just want to, I'll show very quickly again the tools I use. So, you know, after, I'll, I'll make a mark very quickly where I want the center of the eye to be. So, I'll scribe that. And then I'll just, uh, on both sides, I'll just quickly use a, this punch to just mark that so then you know I can put the point of my slitter right onto that and then know that I'm, I'm where I want to be and I'll do that on the other side as well so basically I start off first with my slitter and try to slice in as much as possible um, you know on any hand hammering and, and doing this kind of an operation it's not easy so it takes a lot of effort a lot of heat and it takes the, prop, the proper tools and patience so I'll, I'll work through it with the slitter, and then once I get that to a point, see here I've got an array of different tools. Yeah, and I've shown I've shown these before, but I'll just show them again very quickly. So <clears throat> basically, this one here is pretty new, and I made this one myself. It took forever to cut this out and grind it. All of these round tools are H13, and uh, this flat one is D2. This is my final drift. So this one here, it has a, a very uh, a wide taper. You know, it comes out very quickly and I use this to, once that hole is wide enough to expand it out to just make it easier for me to insert different punches. So this tool is pretty valuable. Like I said, this is something new that I've been working on and I find that it helps to very quickly separate at least the top, you know, few millimeters or so, a quarter inch of the material and, you know, make it easy to insert other, other punches and, and, and the final drift. And then also at the very end, if I use this right before I use the final drift, it makes expelling this tool a lot easier. So then basically I go on to various, oops, go on to various different punches. And these are all just, you know, have slightly different tapers and angles. Uh, like for instance, this one is for more widening out uh, uh, this way. And then this one here is for more widening it out in this direction. This one, you know, this one I hand hammered out. This steel is very difficult to hand hammer. So, um, you know, the, these other tools I just took to the machinist. You know, some people are critical of that, but if you've ever hand hammered H13 or similar air hardening steels, you'll know why. And also, once you heat this steel, it's very difficult to grind it. So, and then this one's kind of, uh, you know, kind of in between these two here. And this is kind of one of my mainstays to get the eye close to how I want it once it's inserted to a certain point where my final drift will fit in and then I can work that through. So, and then, you know, this very slender tapered punch I use, um, you know, sometimes if the eye is not quite in line, I'll use this to slice off uh, some material on one side or the other. So, let me set those aside. And then here, got a whole bag of tricks right here and I'll show you very quickly these are ones that I just had machined because I wanted to change the angles on these tools a little bit you know I uh, from experimentation and for working on different kinds of hammers and, and the like so basically you can see here I've altered my final drift just a little bit and again the drift it's the same this way, the, the width is the same, but then this way, right here, it tapers in this direction just slightly. Just, I think now I made it a little bit steeper, you know, for maybe like 
you know, maybe 13 millimeter up to like maybe 14 and a half or something at this end. I, I can't remember quite exactly. But yeah, these tools are straight from the machinist, so I have to dress these out and I have to, you know, heat treat them still. So that'd be the final drift. This is that one to widen it out. So, and then the various different, you know, the slender punch for cutting or well, for working on sometimes smaller hammers to drift. And then uh, these two, like I said, one, you know, one gives me more material this way, one gives me more material, you know, that way to spread it in the direction that I feel it needs to go. So, yeah, so these are new and I'll, I'll get these done for myself, but in the meantime, I'll use my old stuff. And we set those aside, you know, occasionally, you know, I have to, every so often just dress these down quickly so you know after using and after they're cool I'll just hit them with my angle grinder and just take off any roughness and and rework the edges so yeah let me get started on this hammer and then we'll see how it goes right now it's really raining hard out here but and it's hard for me to see but as the camera I'm looking at the camera it seems like it's clear enough here so uh, here goes nothing And I can see my little mark there. Get on it, take my time. I'll just do that quickly from the other side then, and then I'll be able to go out a little bit heavier and harder. I'm gonna put a glove on for the the uh, hand that's holding the slitter, there's so much heat coming off of the piece. Again, find my mark. And then with these tools, like I can see it doesn't have any color on this end, so I just touch it into the, my slack tub real quick and give it a cool, and it just helps to keep this steel in better shape longer. Okay. So now I've got my mark on both sides. Now I'll go out and I'll heat it up a little bit more, get it to a higher temperature, and go out a little bit harder. this type of air hardening steel if I was to you know have it in the hole for a while and I take it out and I see color on this end don't quench it then you'll you'll over harden this type of steel and it'll be brittle but if it's at a black heat it's okay to touch it quickly into your slack tub to cool it off and like I said in my personal opinion it helps keep it in better shape longer so working through with the slitter, you know, at first it slices pretty easily and then it, you know, it gets progressively harder, you know, as you get to more of the blunter end of this tool. So sometimes I'll switch out and go to a very finely tapered cutter to work that through. Man, let me tell you, it's coming down in buckets out here right now. It is absolutely stinking raining out here. Let me get my camera and show you. Look at this. Piss and rain. Water's just zipping off the roof there. And you can see, I'm not in the weather, but I'm close. I'm gonna go with this finer tapered cutter here and just try to slice it a little bit more and get it close on either side. Ah, 
gods are angry. Yeah, that's already through, I can see on the other side. See how that's got some color on it there, if you can. So I'm not going to quench that right now. I'll leave that on the side there. So now I'll go on to my handheld tools, expand this out. So I'm going to use this tool here, the one that expands it out quite a bit, and you'll see how that works. It looks a lot hotter than the piece actually is right now. I'll, uh, I guess you'll just have to trust me. I'll work on the other side. Well, it's still a little bit hot enough, but not that hot. Sorry if you couldn't hear me too well with the rain really coming down and it's still really dark here for me and I know that the glare is making it so you can see you know better than normal but you know my slitter I must have got it skewed to you know one side or the other so my line I couldn't quite find it you know so what I've had to do is to remove a little bit of a slug so and that's where this the slender punch comes in so I'll remove that right now. You know, I kind of got it offline. You can see this here, but the whole, the uh, well, you can't obviously because it's too bright. But I can true it all up later. Let me just knock this out. Oops. Okay. I don't know if you can see. There's a little slug right here that I've just removed. Ideally, I don't want to remove any material, but I just I got it a little off off uh, off offline there. So not a big deal and that's why I have a variety of different punches. So then now you can see obviously the hole straight through. So I'm gonna work on expanding that now and then I'll uh, true I know I'm gonna work on the pole the sides and squeeze those higher and then true up that that eye as well get it nice and lined up straight. Another thing a very quick thing is um, you notice Sometimes you notice my legs come up when I was swinging really hard on my slitter because I'm trying to get over the piece and use a little bit more power. So you see my leg here, you know, probably coming up and out of the seat, but I'm still staying fairly low. And also, I have a tendency to always choke up on my hammer, but when you really want to get some, you know, good momentum, you got to hold back more, you know, depending on the handle length. So here comes the rain again, so you probably can't hear me, so... This is the top side.
I've been working through my various punches here, and I'm very close to where I want it to be, so, you know, to where my uh, final drift will work. Just a little bit, expand it just a little bit more. Okay, we're getting into the home stretch here. It's really, it's lightning and thunder out here. I'm gonna use my expanding tool one more time and then on to my final drift. And I usually drift three times. Once from the top, once from the bottom, and one final time from the top all the way down to the bottom. So, let's get to it. Drift should be, yeah, just right. Gotta get it nice and hot then. Man, I'm out here in a thunderstorm with a lightning rod in my hand. Let's get it done. Once from the bottom, and then the final one from the top. Okay, this is the final heat. So I'll drift from the top down and make sure it bottoms out or close to bottoms out. You know, when I removed that little slug with the uh, fine tapered punch, I noticed it, I didn't slit or cut straight through. You could see the slitter mark kind of in the center. And then on the other side, you don't really see that or just very faint. So I, I actually, you know, was having a hard time seeing. I didn't slit or cut through. So that's why I had to remove so much. All right. See it bottomed out almost. There we go. Bottomed out. want to expand this pole out as much as possible. It just helps the handle stay tighter. To remove this, then walk it this way and that way. This way and that way. This way. Tap gently with a softer hammer. putting my mark on right here.
like glass. I can't even touch it with a file. So I was gonna heat treat it twice, you know, run it through a thermal cycle twice, but it's so hard. I'm figuring that this is probably 1050 then, so she's good to go. Okay, so here it is, the completed hammer. The Japanese style hammer made from hexagonal stock. I'm very pleased with the way this came out, especially considering I was making this in the blinding rain. Couldn't see half of the time. So I'll come up and give you a close up if I can. So you can see the eye, it's nice and centered. Face is nice and hard. This is a nice hammer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the scale off of this. I'm going to polish it, handle it, and then I'm glad you've watched this video to the end because I'm going to give this hammer away. You know, I, I wanted to do a giveaway for my uh, 10, 000, reaching 10,000 subscribers, but I just haven't had time, and so now is the time, so this hammer is going to be a lucky winner's hammer. So uh, the rules are just very simple. You've watched the video already, so now just make a comment. Obviously a positive comment, hopefully. And uh, I'm going to take only the comments from the first two days, though. The first two full days. So if you make a comment within two days, you'll be entered into the drawing. I'll put everyone's name into a bowl and then pull out a winner. So, and, uh, during, and for that video, at that time, I'll show the finished hammer and to what it looks like. So good luck to all. Someone will be the lucky owner of this, this hammer. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.